How's it going? Just doing a bit of a video here on uh, how to strip down and do some internal mods on a little CR600 Air Chief Rabbit Repeater. Um, people have asked me how to do it and if I could do a quick video on how it's done. Um, obviously it's already done on this particular rifle but I'll pull it apart anyway and show you how to go about it. Um, so obviously going to need a few things. Dremel, deep bearing when you've drilled out everything, uh, Allen keys, mostly metric on this gun here. Uh, I've got a pair of vice grips there for when I hold the little transfer port on the drill press when I'm drilling it out. Um, nice sharp 4mm drill bit. Uh, rolled up sandpaper. Want that to deburr the inside of the barrel once you've drilled it out. Uh, this particular one here, what are we? Well, I'm not sure on the. It's like quite a fine sandpaper. Um, if you want to polish the trigger, sears, etc., and the hammer, on some wet and dry. I've got some 2000 and some 1500 grit here, some water obviously. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Obviously, you remove your scope. Easy to take the suppressor off so you're not knocking it around. Uh, bolt handle, it's come out. Now, normally you start with the bottom, pull the trigger guard off. Excuse my shitty Allen keys. So that there will come off with just that one. And when I lie with them down, I'll put it sort of in a nice order. I mean, I don't need to now because I've done this various times, but people doing it for the first time, putting your parts in order is can be quite important. Now there's one there. Trick guard is also these two under here to come out. these off earlier for the video but hey okay, front one back one so now that will make that able to come out of the stock swap to the side um, now, if you want to polish the trigger, push these pins out, they come out pretty easily. Usually, one, two, there's the trigger. There's actually an adjustment screw on the back of the trigger there if you ever felt like. Probably shorter pull. I'll round mine out a slight, maybe a turn, turn and a half. So keep those pins from here safe. So when this comes out here, don't lose your little spring there. Now you want to polish the back of this here and dry the back of that sear that's what, con that's what uh, grabs the hammer so that back edge there alright carry on I need to take out these two screws here this one this one I'll just take that off first though we'll take off the barrel band etc Pretty loose. 
the slide. Quite a small one here. Uh, these three barrel set screws and the two locking screws. Take those off. And come all the way out, obviously. Just not enough to get the barrel slide out. Little ones probably come out the furthest out of all of them. Just be careful when you pull this out because there is a couple of O-rings on the end of the barrel there, around here. There's your barrel. Take it off if you feel the need. Yeah. We do need to pull this back to get to a screw in the breech. So it's not a lock now, I've got the trigger out, never mind. A small screw in here. Oh, this one's a bit tight today. There it goes. I've already ruined this screw once. I'll replace it. So that one there, and this one under here, and this one here will release the top of the breech off the rest of that, with that gas tube there. And also the hammer, ah oh, the valve sorry, yeah and the hammer will come out. And there is two holes under here, so when you screw it back in, Make sure you have it on the front one and try and screw it to the back one there. It won't work anyway because it's a bigger, bigger hole. So that there, this one here, hopefully you can see all this in the camera. Not really make a lot of videos, but so that will let the hammer spring come out and the guide, spring guide. Top of the breech, or the breech itself, sorry, will come off. So under there, it's your little brass transfer port. And there is an no O-ring on either side of that. One on there, one that's still in here, which I'll get out after the wheel comes out. Um, it's also through there, it's another bit you have to drill out. So this here, transfer port. Barrel through the barrel there. Um, and the valve itself. So to get the hammer out, put it under those the screw here, a little copper bushing or brass copper, one of the two, I don't know, underneath. And then hammer will slide out, the valve will slide out. And you get the tube there. So back to the polishing part, we've done the sears. Now this is what grabs on the back of the hammer when you pull it back. So you can polish this face in here. Also these outer faces I've polished on mine, just to make it a bit smoother through the tube there. So It'll grab under there, see. So you want to polish this face here, this here. Give you a slightly smoother trigger. And this is the valve. Uh, yeah, let me just get that out. Um, not to lose any O-rings. Also, when you draw this out, here's an O-ring in there. Brown O-ring. Pace to take that out. Before you drill, uh, yeah, anyhow, so I 
in here if it'll come. Come on. So I've decided to transfer a port as one of those. It's no different side to side, it's same size, so it doesn't matter what way around you have it when you put it back in. Now this is the valve itself. So don't drill it out in one piece like this. You'll hit the stalk and all sorts of drama. I've actually also, uh, if you can see in there, machine the inside and winding out a wee bit. Give it a bit more uh, CO2 in there, a bit more volume. Uh, there's your seal, your CO2 canister sits against. Spring, the stalk. So the hammer hits that obviously, and if you're not, if you know how they work or not, but it's that inside the valve, it's the gas out. Blah blah. Right, this is a bit, you also have to drill out here. Um, and when you do drill it out, you can watch through there and just make sure you don't go too far. Um, and drill them to the other side. So these are about, I'm not sure, three mil from factory, the hole in here. Uh, transfer port there, the breech and the bell. So you want to go up to four mil. Now I use the drill press to do mine, so that everything's flat. You could use a hand drill if you haven't got a drill press, but I suggest being very careful that you don't misalign the holes. Um, you know, it wouldn't help. Uh, always, got to, always have to align on the end, so that, that barrel, etc. Um, yeah, these pieces here, one, two, three, it's four pieces you need to drill out. So I just basically held mine on my drill press. This I held with a pair of ice grips, hence why I have these. So I put them in, the ice grips. Like that, I held them flat against my drill press base. Locked with vice grips. Bit of cutting oil, so some oil of some sort when you're drilling, drill it nice and slow. Try and get it centered. Drill through. It's four mil, make sure there's no burrs. Uh, same with the barrel, when you drill a barrel, you need to deburr everything. This is what I got this Dremel. I use my Dremel, it's not the exact bit I use, but similar. Deburr the outside of that. Same with this. De Deeper everything. Um, and the barrel itself, you need to deeper the inside, which is what this comes in handy for. You roll up some uh, sandpaper into a tight enough roll to fit down and just stick it in there and just deeper the other side of that hole there. Um, otherwise, it'll start licking pallets and things and they'll start flying all over the place. Um, so deep burring is pretty important and also cleaning up when you're done getting rid of any shards of metal etc dust I use my air gun on my compressor if you haven't got one of those just do the best you can um, perhaps some soapy water or something would be a good start a toothbrush clean out all the crap uh, yeah so I've also thing before I've Drill this deeper to soften the spring up a wee bit so that the valve stays open longer. Let's put more gas out. So, alternative to putting a stepper one of these in, which works in the same way really. Holds the valve open a bit longer, let's put more gas out. Uh, so, what I did, I drilled it down a few mil deeper. And then I also machined the side walls a wee bit to keep it more volume. Some people cut the threads off, but I don't want to start mucking around with that. Um, and there we are. Put it back together. All in reverse. Yeah, just very important. Clean up all the booze and everything. 
because it won't shoot straight. You wonder why? Uh, it's barrel mainly. So we we'll put it all back together. So front of the valve, valve stem, back half. Got their own O ring seal on it. Make sure it goes up nice and tight. There's also a good chance to put a bit of lubrication around the place. Not not too excessive, but um, and your rings and things like that keep them nice. So I've already done mine, so I won't do it again. Uh, I'll do it the other way around. That's basically without spending any money on it. Good way to get a bit of extra power. Uh, I'm still waiting on a proper chronograph to arrive for mine, but uh, it's definitely more powerful than it was to begin with. Um, those are great little guns, very accurate. Uh, let's put it all back together, in case you need a note. We'll start valve back in. Now it's going to be a bit tricky, but let it slide slowly and you'll see the hole come up eventually. Oh, see, long way around. <laughs> that won't help. Not too far. So you'll see it come there. It's pretty important. You can get these a bit offline if you're not careful. Out of line, I should say. Push your own down in there. Now, put this piece back on, but don't button it up too tight, just as a bit. It's important to get the transfer port lined up. In there, they can come out of line slightly, I found the hard way. So just loose, make sure your o in there. It's also a good chance to throw some nice oil up on here and everything. You can't really get to it when the barrel and everything's back on. Chance to give it a nice clean up. Put that back in there, make sure it's sitting how it's supposed to. I'm not on an angle or anything horrible. Uh, I'll work my Seal back in that one. Oh, that can go on. That can go on next. So, that's back on. Yeah. It's that wee screw we took out before. Yeah. Um, keys are a bit haggard. I guess in a decent set at some point. Sorry for the long video. I just wanted to be detailed so no one's asking me questions I could have answered in here. Uh, screw the breech back on. On the top side there. Sorry, that's why I just didn't build it up. I've got the screw in the back on top of the hammer there. My mistake, sorry. So 
the weapons wouldn't get too far ahead of yourself. So, slide your hammer in. And that little screw that had the little copper thingy on it there. Goes in first, obviously under the breech. These are metric. Imperial uh, set, some of them will fit, but we'll probably flog the screws. Okay, another important thing when you're putting these back together is the position of this screw when you put the breech back on. The bolt under there. What catches this one, pull it back and lock it into place. If you get it on the wrong side of it, you won't be able to, be able to cock it. So you have to make sure that's right. So I push it hard forward and that hard forward, and then I put it all together and then nuts the right. So let back on this one here. And remember the forward hole. Not the back one. I really better invest in some proper tools. This may not be the perfect way to do it. I'm sure people will have better ways of doing this, but I mean, you know, this just gives you the gist of how it all goes together and how you do the mods obviously um, so hammers in, spring back in, spring and spring guide In cap has a recess in it. Make sure that's sitting lined up. And this screw is what holds the back of the breech on. Put your back in. Um, let's put this back in. It doesn't actually really need to come out, but unless you're pulling the pin, won't right, stay unlocked. Obviously, locked. Sorry. The wee screw back in there. Sorry, drawing out video, but don't want to do it in detail so no one. Trips up anywhere. We can't get it back together or something. You have to excuse the link on the video. So that's your main tube back together. Now, one mistake I did make at one stage was I forgot to slide this back on. Before I put the barrel and everything back in and it obviously won't fit over the end so slide that on first the barrel can go on and just be gentle sometimes in this I did mark the top of mine so I can get it exact, but it will index itself on that screw when you do it up. So the middle one first, this one that sits in the little dimple there and the barrel where it needs to go.
string them back together. Now this piece first with your wee spring. So it's in that little guide there. Also, there's also one up in there. So the back first. And these pins aren't, they will slide straight through. Just be careful. They are held in place once you put the slot back on, but uh, in the meantime, you just watch them, they don't come out. And now I always do, do the front, front pin. Trigger up back spring. Let's give it a quick test. Oops. See, pins will come out very easily. And the rest is pretty much uh, self-explanatory. They can do the stock from here. Two screws, trigger, uh, obviously optics or whatever, silencer back on. And that's how you modify the internals on a CR600W, also known as Artemis, uh, Storm Raider, a few other names. Um, nothing quite similar to the CP1 or CP2, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.